Hello everyone, this is Kim with Abundant Life Tarot and this is my 2019's top 13 oracle decks. So this would include decks um, that have been in my collection for years and decks that may have come to my collection in 2019 but that I use quite a bit throughout the year. I am going to do some other top 2019 Oracle deck videos. One um, will be top indie decks of 2019 and another is going to be a top mass market. So stay tuned for those videos, but this is specifically speaking to my favorite Oracle decks in my collection as of 2019. Let's get started. All right. so. The first deck I want to talk about is one that is my deck. This is a deck that I just was like, okay, I need a love oracle deck that is something that I can appreciate to my aesthetic. And I wanted to kind of modernize the Romance Angels Oracle deck by Doreen Virtue um, because A, my Doreen Virtue love romance angels oracle deck was very well worn um yeah it's just super worn out and i didn't always want to use it for client readings in fact i always kind of felt a little conflicted um, about using doreen virtue decks in my readings but overall i have purposes for them but again the Doreen Virtue deck was so well worn that it was time to find another love oracle for my professional love readings. So I created my own. I went to makeyourplayingcards.com uh, and I picked out um, these backs. And I am one that really appreciates oracle decks that are tarot size. So, I mean, it works out. This is just stock images that I picked out. That's fragmentation, or it's imbalance and fragmentation. This one before that was time to retreat. Time to express your love. Just photographs religious factors at play sex is affecting this relationship or lack thereof sex <laughs> reflection or deflection open mind open heart flirtation children true love so again anyone could really do this you know you just go make your own deck online and oh here's some more wounded I really like that one <laughs> free yourself vulnerability a couple more chemistry I have a full unboxing of this deck and no it's not for sale it's just something that I created um, just because I had a need for a deck that was really speaking to me and what I the readings that I'm trying to do I do a lot of love readings and so it made sense to make a deck that was tailored to that all right, next deck that we are going to discuss is one that has been in my collection for a long time. Many of you know that I love this deck so much, and that is the Dear Heart Oracle. And the Dear Heart Oracle, here we go. I have the first and the second edition, and I've combined this deck and I think you can still get it, but I'm not 100% sure. But here is the second edition backing. Okay, that's the second edition backing. And then here is the first edition backing. 
And the reason I combined this deck was because I found that um, it just works for the, the readings that I do. I use this deck um, in the part of the reading typically of the overall overarching energies affecting a particular situation or the person involved. And the second edition for me, I interpret it as speaking to present and future energies. You know, so when I see this come up, when I see the this card come up in dreams, it's, you know, present and future dreams, you know. So let's see. And then if it's this edition, the first edition, this is typically past energies, you know. So here's balance. So that's how I work with this particular deck. Passion from the past. I'll pick that up in a moment. Radiate. I don't know why I click so well with this deck, but I do. And I still do. After all these years, it is one of my favorites. I feel comfortable with it. I read with it easily for clients and readings for myself. And it does the purpose that it, it works well for the purpose that I use it for. Because many of my decks in my collection um, have a purpose. Even though I have a lot of decks, they all have a particular purpose in my collection. Next year, though, during my depth year of 2020, I will be looking at decks that I haven't been using or haven't had a purpose and having them find new homes because I want just really to have the decks that I'm using and appreciating and loving in my collection. All right, so that's deck number. Uh-oh, what did I do here? That is deck. I got these all turn around, I think. Sorry, guys. <laughs> I'm like, what am I doing? Um, next up is the Oracle. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Before I move to that one, I think I have them out of order on my deck. The next is the Oracle of, no, my bad, White Rabbit Oracle. This is the White Rabbit Oracle 2. I have one and two. Similar situation with the Dear Heart Oracle. This is another independent produced deck and it is the white rabbit oracle is the name of like the shop on Etsy here's the back of the second edition I believe you can get still both the first and the second edition here's discernment there's two discernment cards in the deck and be, you know in the two decks I should say the white rabbit oracle one the white rabbit oracle two but it's two different images and she has two different meanings, which is cool. So you can, I combined my deck for a massive deck here. So that's discernment. And here's the back of the first edition. And here's choice. I'm all, so I'm all for this deck. I also use this deck for overall overarching energies readings too, but these are more for those life purpose or career readings uh, for the overall overarching energies. And then I typically use the Dear Heart Oracle, the one that I just showed you, for readings that deal with love matters, uh, whether it's family or relationships or, you know, personal matters. Here's Surrender. Every now and then I might use this one for love readings too, but that's not typically how I'm called to use it. So I don't do the same thing like with the Dear Heart Oracle with the backs. I don't know why with, you know, with the White Rabbit Oracle. I just don't. Here's focus. But, you know, that's okay. So yeah, I combined the first and second edition and it's big and it's a great deck. Both of them are individually and collectively. Even the duplicate cards, you it it's okay to use them combined if you wish. Or you can use them separately. 
you know, that's fine too. Now, by the same creator, who is Ariana Siegel, she is the, the creator of the White Rabbit Oracle that I just, just showed you. She's also the creator of the Oracle of Nightmares. I need to re-edge it because they're well-worn. Because I use these also in client readings. Here's the backs. Oh, there's something on it. Here's the backs. And also as a part of the overall overarching energies that is encounter, fear, let's see if I can get to focus, intuition, identity, truth. Dread, manifestation, and so far the decks that I've showed you um, have been independently produced. So, you know, I have a healthy mix, if you will, of both mass produced and indie in my collection. But I tend to gravitate towards independently produced decks, the shadow, in terms of actual readings. I don't know. Okay, so let's move on to the next deck. The next deck we have is the Oracle of Essences, another independently produced deck uh, by Monica the Enchantress. Um, is the creator and I love the box you can kind of see the shimmering of the, the title here it's a sturdy box and here is the guidebook this is a deck after my heart because a it is near tarot size probably a smidge wider than a traditional tarot deck but look at the matte gold gilding, which is held up nicely. Here's the backs. Before I even got into or reconnected with cards for readings, I was definitely into um, essences, if you will, into essential oils, very heavily involved. And so I was excited that this deck was coming out because of my love of the essences. And this is cool. It has um, the keyword, and then it has some key, I don't know if you want to say phrases. Let's see if I can find something I can actually. And here is clove, and then below that is determination and empowerment. Very colorful deck. I used it quite a bit for readings for myself and others. Tangerine, gratitude, and charisma. Wild orange, opportunities, and abundance. Just reading that out in case you can't see it. Grapefruit, detox, and dissatisfaction. This mat. Oh, I love the feel of this deck. And they, it shuffles like a dream. Even though it's matte, even though it's slightly thicker cardstock, I can still shuffle it nicely. Lavender, expression, and release. I won't keep going through all the cards because you can actually look at the unboxing and I've, of this deck. And I've probably featured it in unboxings, or not unboxings, favorites videos uh, over the course of the year. So check them out. You could probably do even a search of Oracle of Essences in like the search box of my channel and be able to find all the videos associated with this very cool deck. I love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. The flowers. Just love everything about it. The energy of the reading. The, the fact that it, it plays on you know, essential oils, and maybe even if you are into them, you could even say, okay, whatever card comes up, I could work with that essence. And if I don't have that essence in my collection, I could still 
conjure up what that would be like, what the energy of it is with the card and maybe put it on my altar. So I really like this deck. Okay, so next up we have is an oldie, and I love it so, so much. It's so worn, but I love it to pieces. It is The Power of Surrender. This is a Hay House deck. This is probably my first, uh, what do you call it, mass market produced deck. And it's a 52-card deck. It says to transform your life by letting go. What do you need to surrender? And it's by Judith, Dr. Judith Orloff. And I just, I love this deck so, so, so much. I use it for readings for my clients primarily, but also for readings for myself. And this deck is just amazing. I encourage everyone to have it in their collection. It's not to everyone's probably artistic style which I get and that's fine but it's a really good deck surrender the idea you can fix someone and some people may not like that it has like the actual meaning there at the bottom but you don't have to read the meaning you, you know you could just go with the key phrase surrender the idea you can fix someone so that's the key phrase and here's the meaning it's time for a relax or for a relationship to shift it doesn't work to try to fix someone. Each person must be accountable for his or her own healing. Let's get close there. Okay, surrender to your full power. Surrender stubbornness. It's definitely got a healthy mix of shadow and light in this oracle deck. You could even use this just solely for pulling one or two cards for someone or for yourself. And really get a lot of insight and information. And it's an easier way into shadow work than just diving into some heavier uh, tarot or oracle decks that like just kind of like leave you like feeling hella raw. This is actually one that has a healthier balance of shadow and light. Surrender to joy. Surrender comparisons with other people. I've done a deck in focus of this deck. I may have done an unboxing. I'm not sure. So if I haven't, I know for a fact I did a deck in focus of this deck. And I love it. I still love it. I've loved it for a long time. It just constantly, it's a constant in my readings. Surrender your need to always be right. Like that. And it's Hay House. I'm thinking, I bought it for my son, my oldest, who's like me. He's an Aquarius uh, sun sign. And he loves this deck too. Surrender negative thinking. Surrender to non-action. And it's just surprisingly really, really good. It really is. I could keep going on and on, but I'll stop for time's sake. So yeah. Really good deck, hands down. One of my top, all-time top favorite decks. Not just tarot, not just oracle. Top favorite decks. It's that good. <laughs> okay, so next up for 2019 is Queen of the Moon Oracle. I think this deck came in my collection either early 2019 or, let's see, does it say when it was published? We'll look and see. By Stacy DeMarco, this is a Rockpool Publishing deck. And I, at the first part of the year of 2019, I use this deck a lot. It's got a sturdy box like Rockpool is typically known for. Just looking to see when they, so they created this. It was, why can I see it? 2018, so. I probably got it in 2018. Here's the guidebook. Kind of glossy. Um, color. Images in the guidebook. And I love the guidebook a lot. A lot. I love this guidebook so much. Uh, Stacey DeMarco is amazing. And here's the card backs. They are glossy. But they this deck has been holding up. And weathering the test of time. 
wisdom, discernment, acceptance. I, I use this deck a lot in the first half of the year. Not so much in the second half of 2019, but then I started picking it back up again and appreciating it. And so I was like, well, I will definitely mention it because I did use it a lot in the beginning of the year. It's a beautiful deck, really and truly. The readings are always accurate, always on point. I usually like to use it as a closing uh, card to my readings and it just ties up everything nicely and you know sometimes I just draw a card for myself at least it's definitely great for one card draws if you're into those creation Okay, we'll keep going, for, like I said, for time's sake. Uh, but it's a really good deck. I definitely enjoyed it and glad it came to my collection. Okay, next up, some more, you know, moon themed. Uh, we have the Moonology Oracle deck. And I use this deck on and off throughout 2019. And I really enjoyed it. I wasn't sure about it. In fact, I don't even know if I did an unboxing of this deck or not. You could check, you know, you could check to see, but I'm not sure because I wasn't sure if I was going to get it. And I'm glad I got it. Uh, Moonology. This is by Yasmeen Bolin. Artwork by Nix Rowan. I love how she has that information on the guidebook there. She's really um, awesome. I've read her book, Moonology, and I also work with, oh, I don't have it available right here. Oh, it's over there. That's okay. But the Moonology Diary, which I adore. Um, I encourage you to check it out. It's on Amazon is where I purchased it, and I got it for 2019. I got my 2020 diary for in, by Yasmin Bolin, and I love the deck as well there's the backs hey house it surprised me a win-win outcome is forecast full moon in libra so it also dabbles into astrology your hard work is paying off new moon, new moon and capricorn really like that matt gorgeous gorgeous uh like feel it feels good in the hand I really it surprised me I also use this deck as a closing deck or um, yeah usually a closing I also use it a lot in my weekly readings as I did also with the Queen of the Moon Oracle these decks Feels kind of summary to me, and that's probably why I use them in the beginning and middle part of the year. Communication is key. I won't keep going for time's sake, but really enjoy this deck. And you could probably still also do a Google search, or not a Google, <laughs> Google, a search in my YouTube channel by Moonology. And you may find some videos where I've been discussing it at length. <laughs> hey House, another mass market produced deck. All right, but the next one is not a mass market produced deck. This is the Earthbound Oracle. Let me get it out of the back. And I just saw one. So here's the backs. I love the size. I love a poker size deck, period. I love the smaller, the better, because it's easier for me to shuffle. I like to card sling and have a lot of cards on my table. And that's what I enjoy. So it's nice to have smaller decks because then I can fit more cards. Here is backs, reversible, super accurate. I've discussed how accurate it is in other videos. 
toxic and I love the artwork so much I have such a love for this deck and I've started using it a lot again a lot so it's there was a time period where I hadn't used it in months and then I picked back up and then just started using it again so I'm always hesitant with certain decks that I've used a lot in the past to give away or give up because typically I find that I might come back to that deck again in the future and start using not so I don't feel so bad about decks that I never connected with although I even have found that I've connected with decks that I've previously hadn't really connected at all with and then I started to feel the vibe but primarily ones that I have vibe with in the past I try to hold on to because usually I end up falling back head over heels in love so that's the earthbound oracle okay love these decks all of the decks i'm talking about are ones that use a lot all the time in my readings okay the a new one new new to my collection in 2019 created by the same deck um or the same creator who created the earthbound is the pathfinder oracle by andrew schwartz this is a diamond shaped deck not for everyone and i wasn't sure it was going to be for me but i love it i've been using it in my weekly readings and i just adore this deck i adore it i love like shuffling it I love that it's diamond shaped. You got to check out the unboxing for more details about that because it has, you know, the, how do they call it? The positive. Let's do this. The positive, the negative here. So the positive, the full circle, negative, open circle, active and passive meanings. And this is moth. So however it shuffles, however it comes out, you read that particular meaning. And let's see what we got. Here's door. It's a fun way of reading with the cards. And funny enough, I have a, like a few circle decks or circular decks. And I'm not really vibing with them. But imagine that you would think that a diamond deck I wouldn't really not appreciate. But somehow it works with the multiple meanings. Here's Seed. Gorgeous artwork. Gorgeous colors. Independently produced. Still available, I'm sh I believe. Here's Key. And I don't know. It's, it's been accurate thus far. And it's been fun to read with you shuffle like that. I mean, it's you could also read it as a square deck, but I just I read it as a diamond deck like it's intended. And I don't care about if the cards go a certain way. I like the different options that might come about, like passive with you know with the uh, like here we have. Okay. It's in the positive position of Boulder. So then, just so you can kind of get a flavor of that. Boulder. A boulder blocks your path. It's, and this is positive. How lucky you are to have been far away when that happened. Blocks are unavoidable, unavoidable in life. So let Boulder teach you that one slipped stone isn't the end of the road. And then there's a negative meaning, an active meaning, and a passive meaning. And I love this deck. <laughs> so, yeah, there's that. And let's see, that's the Pathfinder. The next, the next deck here is Mass Market Hay House 
That is by Kyle Gray, and that's the Angels and Ancestors Oracle cards. And I use this reading, or use this in readings for others, use this in readings for myself, for my um, membership. Love, it's matte. Love the rich color. And just really enjoyed this deck. I love the energy of it, the beautiful artwork. Just really a gorgeous deck. Through and through. I love her lots. She's a gorgeous, gorgeous creature there. deck quite a bit this year on and off not always but often enough to have it make it to this list <laughs> super diverse too and that, I appreciate that I appreciate that I also appreciate that there's a seer card and an oracle card in here that made me happy so that is the Angels and Ancestors Oracle by Kyle Gray. Cool guidebook, you know, traditional Hay House. Gotta love it. And sturdy box. Let's see what else we have on. We're moving along. Number 12 is the Energy Oracle by Sandra Ann Taylor. It's a 53 card deck and guidebook. It is also available on, or, you know, Hay House, I should say. And I use this also for a specific purpose, typically for my yearly readings that I do for myself and others. I don't know why that's the way I like to use it, but that is the way I like to use it. And it works. It's Super accurate, super easy for me to work with and read with, and I just really enjoy it. The only thing I wish is that it wasn't super glossy, um, but, you know, whatever. Those are the backs. This is the only deck I don't mind chakra cards in because of the how well written the guidebook is. Fifth Chakra Archangel Gabriel, and when you see it on his person here, it makes it easier to like for us who are kind of um, not super versed in chakra healing. This helps, but oftentimes, like in my Oracle of Oddities, I'll be honest, I remove the chakra cards out of the deck, and now I use that deck all the time. But before, I was just like kind of a little. I don't know why. It's not that I don't believe in chakra um, energy. It's that I just, I don't know, it just would throw me when they would pop up in a reading. So this one I don't mind as much. All tied up. Broken heart. And holding coin, a coin. The thinking man. The second chakra archangel Ariel. Ariel, yes. Woman holding a coin. Love that. Cornucopia. And I know a lot of people probably forgot about this deck, but this is a good one. This really is a good one. Six Chakra, Archangel Metatron. This is a really good deck. Healer of the Ages. And I still use it to this day. It's one of, you know, it's an older oracle. 
um, in my collection and I still enjoy it immensely. Super thick um, guidebook. Let's see. And she does reversals and upright positions. And it's Hay House, so you'll be able to get it just easily and fine. And then the last step, last but not least, and I always do this where I don't show you guys the, the guide that I've created for it, but the last one, which always seems to make my top videos um, each year, is the Mildred Payne Secret Pocket Oracle. It has grown quite a bit. I etched it. I re-etched it in black because I kept adding different expansion decks throughout the years to it. So to keep it consistent and looking all cohesive, I made sure that I would re-edge it in black, the existing cards, and then etched the new ones. And I still love this deck. I don't talk about it as much because I all I don't always use it as much like I used to. I used to use it heavily, but I still go to it from time to time. People still occasionally book readings with me for this deck. So it is, here's the backs. It's one of my favorites still. And it's by the Patrick, it's by Patrick Valenza. He's the creator of Deviant Moon. I don't own Deviant Moon Tarot, but I don't feel like I need any other one of his decks because this is all the deck that I need. So here's time. I had what I ended up doing was copying the um, guide pages, if you will, and putting them into a spiral bound book so it's easy for me to have it lay flat on my reading table and read with this deck. I just really love it. You can read it almost kind of like a Lenormand, A, because of its size, and B, because it lends itself to that. But it also has the ability to storytell and pr predict the future like a tarot deck. Not that Lenormand doesn't either, but it's a, it, if you read a lot with a sick, you'll know what I mean by that coin. Ribbon. So yeah, this is the 13th deck in my collection that I love, 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 still love. And I don't know if the deck creator is going to add any more because if they do, I don't know if I'm going to be able to really shuffle it anymore. Here's the last, I think the last um, expansion pack with the backs here. And wish. Such a cool deck. It's so much fun to use. It's super accurate and it's just easy to shuffle. Before I etched it, and before I had so many with the expansion pack, it was easy to riffle shuffle, believe it or not. But now, I can't really riffle shuffle it. Oh, let's see what jump. Ooh, coin. That's, that's us in 2019 making a lot of coin. I'll take it. So there you have it, folks. That is my top 13 oracle decks i tried to keep this as short as possible but you know i'm very long-winded you know i love to give super long explanations about why they're in my mix for the year and i'm curious to see how 2019's top oracle decks come about i'm, I'm very excited to see what comes about with that all right guys thank you so much for watching so much love Many blessings and I will see you all in the next video.